people really still don't know what to do with this card, so let's talk about it. Aye. Subscribe. Red Lotus King Flame Crime is a piece of Red Dragon Archfiend support that came out in Battles of Legend Terminal Revenge. Like a few of the other secret rares, it was one of the shorter printed cards in the set, yet for the first week, no one really cared. It was a $4 card. Until the Kali Effect released an updated Red Dragon Archfiend profile on June 26th. In this profile, he played three Flame Crime and two Bone Archfiend. And after this, the price of Flame Crime spiked 200%, to $15, and it's been kind of pricey ever since. That means the card is good, right? Well, it's not unplayable. Before you go about adding a new card to your deck, you first need to understand why you're adding that card to your deck. The pure build of Red Dragon Archfiend is super consistent. It has so many cards that accesses its one card combo lines, but it has a few glaring weaknesses as well. The deck can struggle to push past interruptions on its choke points, such as Red Rising Dragon. Nibiru cripples most of the combo lines, so you have to try and play around it where possible. Super Poly can just fuck you up a lot of the time because you're ending on Dark Dragon Synchros. And of course, things like Dimensional Barrier are just a turn skip when you're going second. You literally have no counterplay. The Centurion engine deals with a lot of those issues, and that's why that is the best way to play the deck, and it gets even better with the release of Rage of the Abyss. But we're not here to talk about that, we're here to talk about Flame Crime. What does it solve? So it's a level 3 non-tuner with the effect, during the main phase, if you control a fiend tuner or your opponent controls a special summoned monster, quick effect, you can special summon this card from your hand. If this card is special summoned, you can inflict 400 damage to your opponent for each fire monster you control with different names. You got that burn effect for time, but we already have Scarlight for time. At least you can do this in your opponent's turn though. If this card is sent to the graveyard as synchro material, you can send one normal trap from your deck to the graveyard, and that's it. So the idea behind the design is for you to send something like Time to Stand Up to the Graveyard or Red Rain, but Red Rain is definitely the more playable option because by the time Time to Stand Up is live, it's honestly too late for anything. So for context, we're gonna go through some of the Flame Crime combos, and this is gonna be just the standard one card combo with Flame Crime. So Normal Summon Soul, add Flame Crime, Special Summon Flame Crime and Synchro those two into Red Rising Dragon, Chain like 1 Red Rising Dragon targeting the Soul Resonator, Chain like 2 Flame Crime to dump a normal trap. Already we're facing the same issue that the deck had before, and that is if Red Rising Dragon gets negated, we have nothing here. It's actually even worse than the original one card combos the deck has, because usually we would have Bone Archfiend in rotation by this point, which means we at least have follow up for the next turn. Assuming we are allowed to play however Soul Resonator gets reborn, we synchro those two into Abyss, and that's going to trigger the Red Raining Graveyard to add itself back. And now we once again run into a pre-existing issue with the deck, and that is Abyss was summon number 5. So if we try to end our turn on this, we get Nibiru and Red Rain is officially turned off as well. Again, we have nothing and no follow-up. Now, a possible improvement against both of these issues is that instead of sending Red Rain, we could send the Black Goat Laughs. That guarantees us at least an interruption in all three scenarios. However, we are still lacking the follow-up in the form of Bone Archfiend, and we don't really want to be relying on a top deck. The problem is, it's so easy to make this card look good. For example, here we have a two-card combo access to Soul Resonator plus a Bone Archfiend or a Flame Crime. We're gonna normal summon soul and add whichever one we don't have. Bone Archfiend's gonna special summon itself and dump a Crimson Resonator to change a level. We can then synchro those two into Red Rising, who is gonna summon back the Crimson Resonator. And of course, Crimson Resonator can summon two from the deck. That's gonna be, this time, a Soul Resonator and a Vision Resonator. From there, we will proceed to Synchro Red Rising plus Vision into the Scarred, who just got an animation in Master Duel, happy days. Uh, Vision's gonna trigger adding Crimson Gaia, and now we're gonna special summon the Flame Crime, Synchroing with the Soul into a second Red Rising. Chilling one Red Rising, target the Soul Resonator, Chilling two Flame Crime to dump Red Rain. Uh, we're then going to synchro the soul plus the red rising into abyss, which is going to trigger the red rain engrave to add itself back, of course, once again. And we're then going to synchro the crimson plus scarred into a dispatter, which will trigger scarred to summon out our OG red dragon archfiend, whose mandatory effect in the end phase actually isn't going to matter at all in this combo. Uh, you'll see what I mean in the end phase, but activating crimson Gaia, we're going to add red zone, set the red zone, and set the red rain. 
proceed to the end phase. RDA is going to attempt to blow up our own board, but we can just banish a soul from grave to protect our monsters. And of course, we have the second soul in graveyard as well, so we have destruction protection from our opponent on top of that. So a base, a live dispatter, a live red zone, and red rain with destruction protection, and the ability to summon back one of our banished monsters off of the red rain with red zone. That is a nice looking board. Flame crime must actually be quite good. Well, actually, red rising getting negated here kills the combo, and getting the beer root at any point, especially here also kills the combo. On the other end of the issue spectrum, with the same two card combo, we can sequence our plays to actually play through an interruption, but the board sucks. So normal summoning the soul and adding the non-tuner that we don't have, we then special summon the flame crime instead of bone, synchro into the red rising, chain link one red rising, chain link two flame crime to dump the red rain. If you don't get interrupted here, you summon back the soul, you make abyss, you add back the red rain and bone doesn't really do anything on its own. If red rising does get hit with imper we can special summon bone by sending a card in hand to grave bone effect dump vision to increase red rising to level 7 vision's gonna add crimson gaia crimson gaia is gonna add back the vision we can then special summon the vision and make abyss with the red rising and that will trigger the red rain and grave so we are ending on abyss plus red rain either way through an imperm or not but that's it and also nibiru fucks us in fact i'm pretty sure there's not a single combo utilizing flame crime that doesn't lose to nibiru all right let's look at kali's combo and see what he does. So we have Crimson Resonator plus Bone, a very good two card combo that we have studied extensively and this two card combo can play through almost any hand trap in the game including Nibiru. Uh, let's see what he does. So special summon Crimson, normal summon Bone. We're gonna synchro these two into Red Rising of course. Red Rising summon back the Crimson. Crimson is gonna summon two from deck. Let's see what he goes for. Vision and Soul. Okay we'll activate the effect of Soul on summon. Add a Flame Crime. Nibiru. Bye! Bye, good, nice boards. This card sucks, man. And the only build I would probably attempt to actually play it in is a Labyrinth build, but uh, that's probably still not even good. On its own, it does literally nothing. While things like Bone Archfiend and Void Apocalypse act as pseudo starters for the deck, they actually get your plays going on their own. It doesn't synergize with any of your other resonators like Crimson or Vision, while Supe, for example, does. And speaking of Supe, she's also much better at allowing you to play through interruptions, including the Biru and even dimensional shifter. We have a whole series on the channel where we started with three structure decks and built and learned the deck from the ground up all the way to nationals. So if you want a deeper insight into Red Dragon Archfiend, I definitely recommend you checking that out. It was uh, very fun. As more cards and support get released, Flame Crime may become a more important piece to the deck in the future. And heck, you can even play it right now and see results because your opponents aren't always going to have the perfect ways to stop you. But if you're playing the deck optimally to the best of its ability, you don't need to spend £30 on a playset. You don't need to buy it at all. So, yeah, thanks for watching.